Guys, I hate to say it, but it is official. Peru are down bad. The Peruvian Football Federation is in the mud, and I don't mean knee deep, I mean up to here. Earlier today, FIFA officially stripped Peru of the rights to host the U-17 World Cup, which comes literally two days after they did the same thing with Indonesia regarding the U-20 World Cup. So really, FIFA down bad as well. The tournament is still scheduled to go on in November and December of this year, but now FIFA have to find a new host. FIFA's official reason for stripping Peru is, quote, the government failed to fulfill infrastructure required to stage the tournament. So once again, poor infrastructure is something that continues to plague Peruvian football. This is something that my guy, one of my favorite managers, Ricardo Gareca, constantly talked about while he was in charge of the Peruvian national team, how there is not enough investment, how the facilities are not good enough for Peruvian clubs or the Peruvian national team to compete with their South American rivals. And he kept on saying that more investment was needed. And once again, Garek has proved correct. There's a very skilled journalist and I wanna shout him out, Gustavo Coelho, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, who has done a fantastic job also shedding some more light on this entire process. You should definitely follow him on Twitter. I will put his links down below in the description. And if what Coelho is speaking is facts, and then the ineptitude shown by the Peruvian government is honestly, it's honestly incredible. It's worthy of some type of Oscar or award for biggest clown show. I mean, there are statements in here that allude to Peru asking FIFA for money to invest into the stadiums to get them ready for the U-17 World Cup. A country's government asking FIFA for money to host a tournament. That is how you know they are down bad. So you might be asking why the government of Peru does not have the necessary funds to renovate the stadiums. And the reasoning that I have seen is because of recent natural disasters that have occurred in Peru. And we're gonna talk about natural disasters and weather in a second because they actually play a bigger part than I ever thought in this entire thing. So the Peruvian government is saying we have the money, but we have to spend it on restoration projects from the recent flooding. And flooding is actually a really, really big problem in Peru. You guys may or may not have heard of a natural phenomenon called El Nino, which literally translates to the boy, which is basically a event that happens every two to seven years or three to seven years in which the ocean becomes warmer. And when the ocean becomes warmer, a whole bunch of other stuff happens that I'm not qualified to talk about. You're going to have to talk to a scientist or an environmentalist. But one of the side effects is increased precipitation. Now, this increased rainfall can get ridiculous, and it is especially problematic for Ecuador and northern Peru specifically. In fact, during 2017, during the last El Nino event, over 100,000 Peruvians were displaced after a massive series of landslides basically ravaged the northern part of the country. Not just homes were affected, but also footballing infrastructure and facilities. And so for what I understand as an outsider, based on what I've been reading about El Nino and the works that I'm seeing from Coelho talking about this, is there are concerns that if they hosted the U-17 World Cup in venues that are in northern Peru that another landslide or flood or river overflow could happen and potentially have disastrous consequences. So not only do you have a government that is unwilling to fund what needs to be funded in order for Peru to see any footballing success, but even the weather, even the water gods are against Peru, it seems. And the icing on the cake is Augustin Lozano, who is the president of the Peruvian Football Federation, at least for now. And I say that because he is currently under investigation for extortion, corruption, and fraudulent administration. And that has something to do with how the Peruvian Football Federation handled broadcasting rights with the Peruvian First Division. Things are so bad that the offices of the Federation were actually raided by police, I believe, last month. So everything is just absolute chaos in Peru right now. We can talk about the weather, we can talk about government officials being corrupt, but one of the other things that's just truly sad about the situation is the fact that this tournament was originally supposed to happen in 2021. Peru knew they were going to host this tournament in 2019, but because of COVID, the tournament was postponed until 2023. So that means that Peru had an additional two years to prepare and get all the necessary renovations completed to host this tournament, and they still couldn't get it done. It's not funny because I feel bad for Peru, but it's funny. It's like, wow, you actually had so much time to do something and you failed, you still failed. And then the Peruvian FA are gonna talk about some BS, like, oh, we can maybe host the U20 World Cup, maybe we'll submit a bid for the U20 World Cup, which Indonesia just lost. But how are you gonna launch a serious bid for the U20 World Cup when you don't even tick the boxes for the U17 World Cup? Everything about this is just 
disastrous. Like I said, Peru, they are down bad, man. They are down bad. They lost their best manager in recent memory. This is the end of, I would call it a golden era of Peruvian players. The freaking club scene is in the mud. There's issues about broadcasting, the facilities. They Literally, they're battling God himself. I don't know what to say. Now that they've lost hosting rights for the U-17 World Cup, there's also a chance that they don't even qualify anymore. I mean, the U-17s have only played one game in the South American Championships, but they lost. So it's really just a series of unfortunate events regarding the Peruvians. I, again, I, my sympathy goes out to them. Uh, football is obviously something that's very important for the people there, and they're just getting screwed. Honestly, there's no other way to say it. They're just getting screwed by those in charge. We'll see where this goes. I hope that the U-17 team qualifies through their own merit now instead of hosting the tournament, but you never know, man. You never know. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and hit subscribe, and let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, man. It's just... I'm just delivering bad news after bad news on this channel, on Deadball TV. It's turned into a goddamn uh, a news reporting outlet, um, which, is, which is definitely not what I want the channel to be, but, you know, you gotta talk about things like this every once in a while. Somebody's gotta talk about it. Someone's gotta bring it up, so... If it's got to be me, then so be it. Make sure you follow us on social media. Links down below in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one.